Hi viewers. In today's class, we are going to discuss on antenna parameters. In previous class, we have discussed two parameters that is beam area and beam efficiency. The continuation for that is beam width. So here, beam width uh, is nothing but it is the aperture angle from where most of the power is radiated. How we can understand this point, we'll see now. See here, this uh, thing you can identify, it is nothing but our radiation pattern. We have taken in polar plot. The same radiation pattern is plotted in rectangular coordinate system. First we will discuss on this, then we will move to that. So first in this polar plot, if you observe here, what is the meaning of the main lobe? So we can know that main lobe is where the maximum and constant energy will be radiated by antenna is continuously placed here. That means, see, this main lobe area is present now. The antenna, whatever the power radiated by antenna will be maximum, it will be constant in this area. If you consider rest of areas, you can observe the amount of radiation or power radiated is very low. So, here for calculation of beam width, what is the main criteria is where most of the power is radiated. That is main key factor here. So, Beam width is nothing but aperture angle means opening angle. So, we are going to calculate our beam width on this main lobe. That means clearly you have to understand beam width calculation is always made on main lobe or major lobe. In simple way we can define beam width like this also. It is the area where most of power is radiated which is called as peak power. That means maximum power where we are having there it is considered. Now looking into this diagram, see here, uh, its unit is in degrees. That means like uh, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 30 degrees, like that we will be measuring the beam width. So first of all, we know this is nothing but B width, width of this beam. So as we are calculating on the beam, we are simply calling it as beam width. And first we will discuss on uh, half power beam width. See here, actually beam width is clearly understood by these two terms, half power beam width and full null beam width. And here, first look into this diagram. This is your main lobe. And exactly on this main lobe, you can watch two lines. That is, one is here and other is here. So, on these two lines, I have taken angle like this. See here, I have marked the width and here when power has fallen to half of its maximum value, it is called as half power beam width. Actually, how we can do this is, in your labs, you can recall this term 3dB line. So, where we draw this 3dB line, 3db line so, where we are getting the constant gain, that is take considered as 3D line. How we will draw that? By considering or uh, taking reference as maxima, just to down 3DB level to that, we will mark this. Here also the same way. This is a maxima power we are having and exactly a 3DB below, we will mark this half power beam width. In a simple way, we can define half power beam width is nothing but where power has fallen to half of its maximum value that is called as half power beam width and next uh, factor is this one so you can watch here here you are having the uh, null null means zero radiation this is main lobe this is side lobe between these two a straight line is marked where we have the zero radiation so if uh, i mark uh, the width between these two lines it is simply called as full null beam width or first null beam width. Full null beam width or first null beam width, both are same. So, why we are marking this is, we need to always know the calculation of full null beam width and half power beam, uh, half power beam width for the uh, analyzing the performance of antenna. Why? Because for some of the applications, there will be requirements like uh, some 60 degree beam width, in this way some requirements will be there. So based on this beam width value, the type of antenna will be chosen. So in those cases, this parameter is very important and even this null calculation is also important. Why? Because see, while calculate I am saying the first null, what it is indicating where the first null occurs just beside the main lobe. 
that means how much angle it is making the first null that we need to consider so the same thing we are going to now discuss in this rectangular plot it's very easy to plot this one you can just uh, bring out the diagram from this only we can bring this one see look here at the center of the axis i have marked 0 0 90 degrees minus 90 180 this side and minus 180 on this side right so here where we got our maxima along the z direction we got the maxima radiation in this the same way here we are marking our maxima radiation in this direction and at zero we have plotted our maxima like this this is the maxima radiation line or main lobe we are having as it is rectangular plot we have taken half section right like this so the same main beam we have plotted like this and next what happened here approximately this will be 45 degrees and this will be exactly 90 degrees right so here based on this concept here we got the side lobes right this one as well as all these are the side lobes we are having all the side lobes based on the angle we have marked like this on both sides like this okay so exactly where we got the first null in this area that means in between main lobe and 90 degrees here we got our null so the same null we have marked like this and here also we are going to measure the half power beam width and full null beam width half power beam width means the same definition again so where power has fallen to half of its maxima value is calculated as half power beam width and when we take the width between first nulls then it is called as full null beam width or first null beam width okay so in this way in either of the plot we can calculate the beam width so beam width calculation uh, is very important parameter for antenna and unit for that is radians or degrees and here itself we can have a uh, small formula so here full null beam width is equal to 2 into half power beam width so if you are able to calculate half power beam width stride the way just if you take twice of that we get the full null beam width okay so this is all about your beam width next we will move to the next parameter okay our next parameter is radiation intensity so what is the definition for radiation intensity radiation intensity in a given direction is nothing but power per unit solid angle right it is nothing but power radiated per unit solid angle in a particular direction so here direction is one of the important parameter so in a simple way radiation intensity we can define like this also it is the maximum emission of radiation to the possible extent by an antenna that means where the antenna can emit maximum possibility of radiation is used for the calculation of this radiation intensity say you will be calculating light intensity like that only radiation intensity right here the unit for this radiation intensity is watts per steridian here this unit will be new for you steridians previously watts all these type of units you have heard but here we are going to use the new unit steridian why we have to use that we will see and see this diagram it uh, everyone of us know it is a just a circle it is simply a 2d plot right so in this circle i have marked the radius along this direction and the angle between these two is some theta which is equal to one radian so if we calculate the total circumference of this what we can say 2 pi r that is nothing but 2 pi into radian so the same diagram we cannot use for calculation for antennas the reason is we will see here see keep in mind antenna structure and its output is always a three dimensional thing that means we for analyzing of electromagnetic fields everything we need to use the three dimensional coordinate system in the same way a circle straight the way we cannot use for calculation of radiation intensity so we have taken a three dimensional equivalent that is nothing but spear so the spear i am going to use for calculation of radiation intensity see here from the center i have marked radius like this and here if you see clearly 
wherever the power outward flow from say here for example here an antenna is placed and output power flow from an antenna per unit solid angle this we will consider as one unit solid angle unit solid angle is simply called as radiation intensity straight away here I can define it but whenever you are going to consider a case of sphere automatically you need to go for a calculation of ohm ohm is nothing but your beam area so here it will be equivalent to one steridian and here this uh, calculation is a three dimensional part so while using the uh, this three dimensional structure automatically our unit will be converted to watts per steridian and in a simple way radiation intensity is nothing but power per unit solid angle that means it is nothing but the outward power flow per unit solid angle in a particular direction here uh, I am mentioning direction also that means we have to include this radial distance also so we will see the uh, required mathematical formulas for that see here uh, these are the required these are the required formulas for this the radiation intensity is nothing but a far field parameter so here if you see this is the representation of our radiation intensity with u in some textbooks it is taken as s it's also correct or sometimes even we will be representing with u of theta comma phi it is also right so here what is the formula r square into w radiated it is nothing but power radiated or in another way we can define it as radiation intensity also so here radiation density means it's nothing but power flow per unit area you can see a simple difference between both of them whereas radiation intensity is power flow per unit solid angle this is a <coughs> small difference between both of them power flow per unit solid angle this is power flow per unit area so here while calculating the uh, radiation intensity we need to include the radial distance that is nothing but r value r square into w radiated that is nothing but radiation density so if you product these two automatically we get our radiation intensity so when calculating the total power it is obtained by taking the entire spherical sphere spherical area that is from 0 to pi towards the 0 to 2 pi u is nothing but radiation intensity into sin theta d theta d phi which is equivalent to your d ohm d ohm is called as elemental area or decremental area of a solid angle right next our next parameter is effective length or we can call it as effective height both are same so here uh, this parameter is uh, straight away relevant to the length of the antenna see first we will see the definition effective length is the ratio of magnitude of voltage at open circuit terminals to receiving antenna to the magnitude of field strength of the instant wavefront see <coughs> for appearance it may be lengthy but we will uh, have in a simple way see here this is the physical structure of antenna say for example I have taken some dipole antenna like this you can see here this is the tip of the antenna this is the bottom this complete physical length is represented with L so everyone will think that the radiation comes out from this entire antenna but is it true nowhere a practical antenna can produce complete radiation throughout its physical structure if you take this as antenna structure it is not possible to get uniform radiation throughout this so in the same way here what happens is out of this entire physical area it will radiate perfectly or effectively up to this level that length we are calling it as effective length and it is denoted with l e and uh, the formula for this is v by e it is nothing but uh, magnitude of voltage at open terminals of receiving antenna that means how to do the calculation part is we will take a receiving antenna and having its uh, terminals open we will calculate this voltage and uh, uh, we will have the field strength of the instant wave 
that means the input wavefront what we are giving for that we will calculate the field strength then we will get the E. If we take the ratio of these two automatically we can get the calculation of uh, effective length. So here effective length or effective height both are same but is it possible to have these two terms equal? Not possible always they are not equal and always physical length of the antenna will be greater than effective length. If these two becomes for example see these two are equal means what it indicates an antenna is 100% efficient. Is it possible practically? Not possible. So practical situation is that physical length is greater than effective length. Say for example if you take a parabolic dish antenna like this. So this is most famous structure you will be seeing so many areas. This is dish antenna. If you, you see its size will be very large and you will expect throughout this plate complete uh, dish the radio waves will be coming out. But practically some area will be blocked. In the same way if you take a dipole antenna also <coughs> we will have the uh, radiation pattern like this. If this is your dipole this is your radiation pattern. Here also all this area is nil radiation or null radiation. So in that way we can say that always the physical length of antenna will not be equal to effective length. There will be uh, some losses like conductor losses, ohmic losses like that. right? So this is the thing regarding the effective length. In another way we can say effective length of antenna is nothing but the capability of an antenna to transmit or receive electromagnetic waves, simple definition. It is the ability of antenna to transmit or receive electromagnetic waves, right? Okay. So these are the three parameters uh, what we have discussed in uh, today's class are beam width as well as radiation intensity and effective length. Okay. Thanks. Thank you for watching this video.